hello friends this is the part 4 for unit 5th now we will study about the Vaughan model intensity and dilution and color consideration transparency and shadow so previously we saw the Vaughan model had previously we observed that the Vaughan model had various drawbacks also computing surface color using an illumination model such as Fonge formula at every point of interest can be very expensive and the second disadvantage was to avoid this problem we apply the formula at full scale only at selected surface point to overcome overcome such kind of disadvantages or loopholes we have now one model the one model provides a method for simulating studio lighting effects by controlling light intensity in different directions the intensity in different direction is controlled by selecting values for the font exponent in addition light controls such as barn dunes, doors and spotlighting used by studio photographers can be simulated in the one model it is implemented in PHIGS plus constant shading the least time consuming approach is not to perform calculation for additional surface points at all the color values of those selected surface points are used to shade the entire surface it can produce good results for dull polyhedrons lit by light sources that are relatively far away in the font shading it can be understand that this technique is relatively time consuming since the illumination model is evaluated evaluated at every point of interest using the in interpolated normal vectors however it is very effective in dealing with in dealing with specular highlights so one model can also be understood by studio lighting defects produced with the one model using five light source to eliminate a Chevrolet camera so primary rays these are the light rays coming from viewport through the center of each pixel into the scene it is a primary ray intersects an object then the color of the corresponding pixels is determined by the surface shading of an object at the intersection point Several secondary rays are used to compute the three component of this surface shading. To find the three component of the surface shading, several secondary rays are used. <coughs> Intensity attenuation we can understand as radiant energy from a point light source travels through space its amplitude is attenuated by the factors 1 upon d square where d is the distance between the light has traveled distance that the light has traveled a general function can be represented as fd is equal to 1 upon a0 a1 d plus a2 d square local contribution this is the first component which refers to the direct contribution from the light source we send a shadow ray or illumination ray from the surface point to a light source if the ray is blocked before reaching a light source the surface point is in shadow so this is the second component which refers to the reflection of light energy coming from another object surface inter object reflection this is determined by a specularly reflecting ray transmitted contribution 
This is the third component which refers to the transmission of the light energy coming from behind the surface. A user, a user can then fiddle with the coefficients a0, a1 and a2 to obtain variety of lighting effects for a scene. The applications are environment meet mapping, soft shadow, blurry reflection and motion blur. <coughs> so various techniques have been developed to achieve certain desirable visual effects uh, as we can find out from the given formula. So with the given set of attenuation coefficients we can limit the magnitude of the attenuation function to 1 with calculation fd is equal to minimum 1 comma 1 upon a0 plus a1d plus a2d square using this function we can then write our basic illumination model as where di is the distance light has traveled from light source. A shiny object reflects the surrounding environment instead of ray tracing the three dimensions are seen to obtain the global reflection. We may map a picture of the environment onto the object. The object is typically placed in the model of an enclosure such as a cube cylinder with the environment map attached to the middle to the object. Ray traced images of scene involving fixed point lights are characterized by the harsh edges or the shadow areas. However, real lights are not mathematical points and they cast umbra and phenumbra in order to produce soft shadows. We model a light source by region. Called an area light, this area is divided into sub areas or zones. Shadow rays are then distributed to these zones via random selection with equal probability for each zone. To get blurry reflection of the surrounding on a glossy, not mirror-like object, mirror -like object, we distribute the reflected rays in order to find the uh, certain uh, certain figures uh, where di is the distance light has traveled from light source. Color consideration can be understand by uh, understand in this way. To incorporate color, we need to write the intensity equation as a function of the color properties of the light sources and object surfaces. For an RGB description, each color in a scene is expressed in terms of red, green and blue component. A fast moving object tends to look blurry in a photograph. To mimic this phenomena, uh, someone can distribute, it, distribute rays over time. In other words, we predetermine the path or a series of positions of a moving object based on the characteristics of the movement. So supersampling means each pixel is divided into subpixels and separate primary rays in sent is sent and traced through the center of each subpixel. The color intensity values of the primary rays for the subpixel are then combined. Adopted supersampling says in this approach we send one ray through the center of a pixel and four additional rays through its corners. Stochastic supersampling says in this approach we de deviate from using the fixed pixel grid by scattering the rays evenly across the pixel area in a random fashion. So in this way we can find out the various wa ways of light sources. Light sources are referred to as light emitting sources and reflecting surfaces such as the walls of a room. 
color consideration the diffusion diffuse relief reflection reflection coefficient vector for example could then have rgb component where kd r for red kd g for green kd b for blue if we want to we want an object to have a blue surface we select a non zero value in the range from 0 to 1 for the value refractive component kdb the red and green refractivity components are set to 0 kdr is equal to kdg is equal to 0 in order to keep behind the red and green factors a, a luminous object in general can be both a light source and a light reflector the simplest model for a light emitter is a point source when light is incident on an opaque surface part of it is reflected and part is absorbed the amount of incident light reflected by a surface depends on the type of material shiny material reflect more of the incident light and dull surfaces absorb more of the incident light for an illuminated transparent surface some of the incident light will be reflected and some will be transmitted through the material in addition to diffuse reflection light sources create highlights or bright spots called specular reflection the highlighting effect is more pronounced on shiny surfaces then on dull so this can be differentiated between the different color consideration so what is transparency transparency means light emission from a transparent surface is in general a combination of reflected and transmitted light here in this figure we have incident light and the transparent object realistic transparency effects are modeled by considering light refraction when light is incident upon a transparent surface part of it is reflected and part is ref refracted so we can have the certain certain point and certain area of uh, this uh, uh, method the number of incident light rays cutting across the projected surface pa patch depends on the value emitted by the surface if the incoming light from the source is perpendicular to the surface at a particular point that point is fully illuminated a surface is illuminated by a point source only if the angle of incident is in the range 0 to 90 degree we can combine the refracted ray and incident light and transparent object and point source intensity calculation to obtain an expression for the total diffuse reflection many graphic packages introduce introduce to calculate such incident light and transparent object for certain region through simulation or through certain devices we can calculate the transparency factor of any specular reflection values which is projected on the surface of the light transparency have to light source reflection direction refraction direction reflection direction r and refraction direction t for a ray of light incident upon a surface with index of refraction eta angle of refraction theta r is calculated from the angle of incident theta i and the index of refraction ni of the incident material usually air and the index of refraction and r of the refraction material according to sin theta is equal to the eta i upon eta r sin theta i transparency is the is possible in a number of graphic file formats 
the term transparency is used in various ways by different people but at its simplest interest is full transparency that is something that is completely invisible only part of a graphic should be fully transparent or there would be nothing to see more complex is partial transparency or translucency where the effect uh, where the effect is achieved that a graphic is partially transparent in the some way same way as colored glass since ultimately a printed page or computer or television screen can only be one color at a point partial transparency is always simulated at some level by mixing colors there are many different ways to mix colors so in some cases transparency is ambiguous in addition transparency is often an extra for a graphic format and some graphic for uh, programs will ignore the transparency for Snell's law the diagram in the in the previous slide figure we can obtain the unit transmission vector t in the refraction trans direction theta r as t is equal to theta i upon theta r cos theta i minus cos theta r multiplied by n minus theta i upon theta r t into l raster file formats that support transparency include GIF, PNG, BMP, TIFF, and JPG 2000 through either transparent color or an alpha channel. Most vector formats publicly support transparency because they simply avoid putting any objects at a given point. This includes EPF and WMF for vector graphics this may not strictly be seen as transparency but it requires much of the same color careful programming as transparency in raster formats more co more complex vector formats may allow transparency combinations between the elements within the graphic as well as that above this include SVG and PDF also. A suitable raster graphics editor shows transparency by a spatial pattern, a checkboard pattern. One color entry in a single GIF or PNG images palette can be defined as transparent rather than an actual color. This means that when the decoder encounters a pixel with this value, it is rendered in the background color of the part of the screen where the image is placed. Also, if this varies pixel by pixel, as in this the case of background image. Transparency also can be understood, understood as a simpler procedure for modeling transparent objects is to ignore the path shifts altogether. In effect, this approach consumes there is no change in the index of refraction from one material to another, so that the angle of refraction is always same the angle of in images. The application of transparency include an image that is not rectangular can be filled to the required rectangular rectangle using the transparent surroundings. The image can even have holes. In a run of text, a special symbol for which an image is used because it is not able in the character set can be given in a transparency transparent background, resulting in matching background. The transparent color should be chosen carefully to avoid items just then just happen to be the same color vanishing. If in this limited form of transparency has patchy implementation, though most popular web browsers are capable of displaying transparent GIF images, this support often does not extend to printing 
especially to printing devices which do not include support for transparency in the device or driver outside the world of web browser support support is, is fairly hit or miss for transparent gif files as limitations of transparency pixels are also there which can be decided de describe in various ways so in this figure we have background object transparent object and projection plane the term 1 minus kt is the opacity factor and the entire formula can be summarized as 1 minus kt into i reflect plus kt into i transparent so background however with for example a red background for the intermediate colors would be dark red gray as pixels would give an ugly and unclear result for a variable variable background color there are no suitable fixed intermediate colors png and tiff also allows partial transparency which solves the edge limitations problem however support is even more patchy internet explorer prior to version 7 does not support partial transparency in a png graphic shadow incident light from a distance source is defined in the different parts an alternative approach to full transparency is to use a clipping path a clipping path is simply a shape or outline that is used in conjunction with the other graphics everything inside the path is visible and everything outside the path is invisible the path is inherently, inherently vector that can potentially be used to mask both vector and bitmap data. The main uses of clipping path is postscript files. So although this is the last topic but very important because shadow is very important part of any 3D object. Shadow contributes a lot to the visual effects of the scene. Through shadows, human distinguish more clearly movement and depth of the objects. Shadows are important but also require more complexity to get right. Compared to light calculation, where we can have some deviation from reality, for shadows it is more easily detectable if something is wrong these are a number of techniques that can be used to create shadows for the objects through history some have been more popular than others in this sh short shadow topic we will see real time techniques shadow mapping and shadow volume also known as stencil shadows Hidden surface method can be used to locate aerials where light sources produce shadows by applying a hidden surface method with a light source at the view position. We can determine which surface sections cannot be seen from the light source. These are the shadow areas. If you were to move a wall further away, then the umbra would not reach it. The area where the phenomena meet would be called entumbra. If we are modeling the scene with a point or directional light source, then by themselves they would only generate the umbra for the point light source. The area is infinitely small, so all other objects will be bigger from it. This means that if they cover the light source, they will cover it fully. For the direction light source, the area is infinite and the light only travels from it in a single direction. If we were in to if we were to model it in a way where light could travel in all directions, then everything would be 
always lit and there would not be a shadow so we are left only with this single direction of light it is easy to see that also cast only the directional light sources this is another example of shadow we have different global illumination we often can get realistic shadows with little effort in order to estimate where the light is traveling we already are taking into account the scene geometry let us look closer at path tracing previously we applied a lighting model directly in all of the hit points of rays this ignores the possibility that the hit point might not be directly visible from the light source so in order to find out if that is the case we can send another ray directly into the light from the hit point if it hits the light source the point can have a little calculation applied on it for the light source if it hits something else then the point will be in the shadow once we have determined the shadow areas of all light sources the shadow could be treated as source patterns and stored in pattern areas arrays the scene in the given on the right hand side shows shows shadow effects produced by multiple light sources we can display shadow areas with ambient light intensity only or we can combine the ambient light with a specified surface tex texture on the right there is an extension of the path tracer from the last topic that now shoots four shadow rays into the random position and the four quarters of the area light source depending on how many of the shadows rays actually hit the light source the light contribution from that light source will be accounted you can see that there will be an umbra and penumbra of the cube on the floor for your standard graphic pipeline rendering way shadow mapping is currently quite a popular technique we again want to know if a fragment we are rendering is in the shadow or not is there something between our fragment and the light source this is same as asking is that point visible from the light source or is it occluded by some other object we can find out that out if we render our scene from the light source that will create the depth buffer as seen from there after this we can check for each fragment is the value height the depth, depth buffer less than the value our current point would have so we have studied transparency shadow and the fog model first we need to render from the light source using a camera <coughs> which is study in the lighting illumination model whose view volume correspond is corresponds with the value that is illuminated by that light source generally that would need to include the entire view volume of our normal camera also depending on the type of light sourcing we could need to use different projections for a directional light source we can use an orthographic camera because we want to know the nearest nearest objects to the near plane for a point light source we need a prospect perspective camera because we need to we want the distance to the point thank you very much for any query you can mail me at sachin dot saxena at the rate srms dot sc dot in you can visit my blog also that is sachin placement dot blogspot dot com thank you very much in the further slide we will see how we can
best of luck for your career best of luck for your examination also so this is all about the fonge model and the elimination model for any query you can mail me at sachin.saxena at the rate srms.ac.n this is my official email id you can also visit sachinplacement.blogspot.com where you will find the handwritten notes on computer graphics of unit 1, 2, 3 etc. You will find previous year question papers, quiz, ebooks, uh, lab mm, manuals etc. Et we will find the principle of programming language notes and uh, principle of programming language notes and uh, mm, image processing notes. You will find gate lectures you will find their uh, artificial intelligence notes you will find python code you will find advanced matlab you will find da data structure etc so this is all about the uh, fonj model so in the next model we will study about the one model the one model provides a method for simulating studio lighting effects by controlling light intensity in different directions light source are modeled as point on a reflected surface using the fonge model for the surfaces points then the intensity in direct in different directions is controlled by selecting clues for the fonge exponent for the next video we will study fonge uh, one model in the, uh, the last part of the unit fifth in addition, light controls and spot lighting used by studio photographers can be simulated in the one model. Flaps are used to control the amount of light emit emitted by a source in various directions. So, so in the flap is uh, this is uh, the uh, basic introduction of one model or the last part of unit fifth. So we will very uh, very soon we will visit the last part of the unit fifth as radiant energy from a point light source travels through space its amplitude is attenuated by a factor where d is the distance that the light has traveled this means that a surface close to the light source receives a higher incident so intensity from the source meant a distance surface large d so all these are relevant to the next ppt which is a general inverse quadratic attenuation function can be set up in various ways a user can then fiddle with the coefficients a0 a1 and a2 and so on thank you